Okay, no events right now, so Melusines are beautiful creatures. The... They are the pride of Fontaine. Or be sure to befriend them. them. <laughs> Cause them no. about it. Uh there's one there and one here. I'm more interested in the one that happens here before. Then if this doesn't take too long, I'll check the other one. Oh, it's closer. Oh. Was Curry assistant to the dog? Are you part of the quest? The new road shall come new opportunities. I'm going to push for this for sure. And you are. Hello there, friend. I'm Foscari, assistant to His Excellency the Dog. I'm preparing to construct a new navigation route. Uh, a new sea route. There are always people saying that we should consider everyone's happiness, that we shouldn't ruin the peace for our little town. Mm. They just deluded themselves into thinking that they are happy. You won't find more idiotic people in the entire world. The only reason they are so self-satisfied is that they've never seen the outside world at all. Those with a brain have long ceased to entertain such folly. Everyone has the right to pursue their own happiness. Petrichor is not some ancient hamlet to be forgotten at all. I wish to establish links with the Spirit of Rosula, cooperate with them. I want our town to become an important junction on shipping routes. That will breathe new life into our home. Okay, I thought we had something to do. Who is she? Do you happen to be heading to sea as well? If so, please, could I trouble you to bring me along to by the harbor? My wave rider is pretty small. I haven't been taking people in our wave ride. Sorry, but I don't intend to go out to sea right now. It's pretty small. Oh, I see. Oh dear, this is going to be a toughie. Well, if it's really urgent, we still help. Oh, what kind of souls you are? In any case, my name is Julieta, and I sell instruments. No long ago, I entered an order with some outlander gentlemen for, for a batch of materials for, from them. I mean, even the greatest artisan wouldn't be able to fashion an instrument from nothing. According to the contract, the payment must be made these two days at Beta Harbor, but I overslept and missed the last boat. Hmm. Um, it might be a nine, the nightmares I've been having lately, but I couldn't sleep well. It is my fault, of course, but right now I need to get to Beta Harbor. It's so, so, if you'd be willing to help, I'd be immensely grateful. Three times the going rate, that's what I'll pay. Three times? You're generous, huh? Oh, I don't know what's the going rate. But um, okay, well, it's a matter of trust and reputation. This is life and death for us business people. Well, it sure seems the way. Well, what are we waiting for? Get on board, sailor. Oh my god, the things. Get on board. Thanks so much, good sir. You cross the sea and arrive in Beta Harbor. I didn't even have to ride the wave boat, the wave rider. Yes, we're here. Thank you both so much. Now I can deliver the payment as promised. We can have our outlander friends viewing us spontaneous as fickle folk who flip on their agreements. Well then, here's the payment as promised. Shiny, shiny more. As long as there's some to be had, we can do business. That said, you know, since we're here already, why don't you have a look around? If we were to go back to Petricor now, uh, did you two come from Petricor by any chance? Hey, don't just talk to people from behind like that. You gave them a fright. Oh, did I startle you? My apologies, truly. 
I simply could not contain myself upon hearing my hometown's name. Uh, did you really have to get this excited though? Well, I left home when I was young and I haven't been back since. Ten years flew by while the business of Meru ten years without a word from home. Well, since you come from, from there, could you tell me how things have been going? You look kinda old to be away just for ten years and you were young ten years ago. Right, I forgot to introduce myself, just call me Justino. Hello there, Justino. Paimon's name is Paimon and this is Ignis. And you're, you've come to the right people. We have deep understanding of Petricor, after all. Um, wouldn't you think we were crazy to tell him that we followed a cat and we wound up disrupting an ancient plot and resolving the crisis in his hometown, though? Well, those things did happen, but you sound like pure nonsense. Uh, Petricor is doing great. How great you ask? As great as before, that's how. If he just came from there with a Reef Rider, he could probably visit there at any point, couldn't he? Really, just as before then? That's good, that's good. Speaking of which, would it be better for you to go since you are local rather than rely on us outsiders? You speak reason? I should do, yes. I did not bet an eyelid when I left it at all. When I left it all behind me back then, yet now I shrink back from my desire to return. How strange, my courage fails me as I grow older. If I hadn't found this flute in my baggage while packing, a sharp flute made of bone, you can see the thin marks that has left upon it. Looks like from a hill true. Hmm. When I left home, I had nothing with me but this flute. In truth, my family disapproved of my departure and my father snuck the instrument out to me at the last minute. <laughs> Good times those, not a murder to my name, but with the flute strings flowing free, a fire in my belly and a dream. It was like the whole world was mine for the season. Later, I will make lots of friends in Somero and my business will grow. If only I could have written them a letter, but I had all but forgotten my family at home. Um, anyway, if I may make such a request, would you be willing to take me with you when you return to Petricor? So you're gonna pay us triple too? Triple? That's right, the lady we just carried over had urgent business to attend to, so she paid us triple for the ride. Well, I should have enough for that. Alright, I'll pay you triple too. Strike while the iron is hot, as they say. Since I decided to return home, any delay would be detrimental. Well, we're not exactly professional boatmen or anything, but, but such premiums are tough to refuse. Uh, my wave riders as a fast and steady boat. Hop on board and we'll be off. Thank you. From Beta Harbor. You return. You then return to Petricor. Hmm. Uh, you don't look so good. You sure you're okay? I'm just a bit seasick. Uh, sorry. I'll just throw up over there for a bit. Be right back. Uh, sure, but don't forget to come back as soon as possible. After a good long while. Uh. Wait, something's alright. Why isn't Justino back yet? Uh, how far did he go to? We could see him. We should be able to see him. Did he vomit till he passed out? Uh, or is he trying to wiggle his way out of pain? Mm. Didn't he say that he was a big shot booming businessman? So, what's he filming? Either way, we gotta find him and past. Uh, he went inside town to go up. That? No.
Where? It's such a small area. Can I? Okay, let's talk to this guy. Hello there. Uh, have you seen a mercant from Fontaine dressed in some mirror grab? Can they recognize people just by face like that? Where they are from? You explain the situation. So this fellow you're looking for is named Justina and he claims to be from Petricor. That's right, I have seen him. Wait, were you two acquainted from before? Just acquainted? Huh. Still, even if I recognize him, I wonder if he still recognizes his little brother. So many years away and not a letter sent back. Why, I've already had a tombstone erected for him behind the town. And now he's back and he hasn't paid his boat fare. Disgraceful. Disgraceful indeed. We <laughs> shouldn't comment too much as I was saying. No, disgraceful. No, wait, but we're the victims here, aren't we? It, and if Justino really does faint from discomfort somewhere. Uh, fine, I'll go search together with you. I'm a local, so I know our surroundings better. Also, I have some idea as to where he'll be. Are you pulling my leg? I'm sorry, but I really don't remember. Uh, don't you know what this uniform means? Doesn't it remind you of anything? Of course I know what you do, but I'm death free. Or I should be, unless a friend took a loan in my name. Friend? Who cares about those excuses? I only recognize what's written here in the, on the contract in black and white. Uh, it's my duty to make violators pay up. This is my first job, you know. I wanted to be worthy of this uniform, so I showed up at a specific location three days in advance. Three days. I spent them thinking about the excuses you make to get out of pain and how I respond. And then you just up and ran. All that effort I put in wasted. Now, I have no choice but to go by the book and teach you a lesson first and then bring you back to report. No, I don't want to leave Petrichor anymore. Help me. Does have business over there? Stop it. Does any amount of money on warrant such cruel treatment? Please, Zenus, don't let him hurt Justino. Only you can stop him now. Wait, you know I can fight already? Pay your dues! Gather! Silence! Me so soon! Prepare yourself! Let the mighty be humble! You can't run from dead! Uh, hard help? Seriously, you'd rather pay through the nose for a powerful bodyguard than just follow a contract. I'll never understand your merchants. No, I just couldn't control myself ever to see you uniform. Actually, I also hear to collect the debt. Kinda of both. Yeah. That's right, he hasn't paid us for our triple boat fare either. But you know, if he is in this much debt, it seems unlikely they will get paid at all. No, I still have enough for the boat fare. I counted. I should be fine on that front. Then what about the contract and debt he speaks of? Is that perchance the souvenir you were giving us after more than 10 years? How could you say that, Giovanni? I really don't know a thing about the contract he's talking about. I don't know what to say to make you believe me, though. The handbook says that people will lie and do all they can to wriggle out of that. But the contract's clearly written. Don't e even try. You still owe us payment for 10 crates of materials to make those blessed flutes of yours. 
Wait, what did you say? Flutes? Are you still sticking to the pretend scene and now? Participant. Participatia. Uh, you Fontaine, you sure have names that are not to pronounce. Sorry, but who's that? My name is Justino. Justino Pasquale. Uh, one moment, let me see. Ju uh, Pas uh, Julieta Participatia. From Petricor. Uh, seems to be a woman. <laughs> uh, hmm. Wait, you're not a woman then? Why were you going on about some flutes back there at Beta Harbor? I was talking about this flute. This is the flute my father gave me when I was about to leave home. He hoped that I would inherit him the family business of instrument making. But I... forget it. Hold on, if this had nothing to do with you, then why did you run? I'm sorry, but I really don't remember. Is... I said that, didn't I? But you sounded so aggressive and looked so frightening. What was I... Uh, what was I going to do except to run? Now, this is my first job, won't you remember? Of course I had to double my enthusiasm. To the point that you showed up three days in advance. Well, it looks like your career is in dire straits now. Uh, then where did the Juliana Partipazia go? Speaking of that, the lady we ferried over first works with in the instrument business. You know, the one who was going to be late for a business transaction. Didn't she call herself Julieta? Well, so she's in Beta Harbor now. I had to find her as soon as possible. She seems to care a lot about credibility, so she probably wouldn't default. Uh, you're going to get scammed if you hold, hold on to such naive ideas. People lie, and that's what the handbook says. Anyway, I got to go find her immediately. The agent departs. How did the agent got here? The, the way this guy and Juliet that we're talking about, it's not frequent boats coming going from here. Seriously, where does he get the chick to lecture Paimon based on that handbook of his? He was the one who made a mistake. What a farce. I see you're the same as ever, big brother. All sucking people into whatever trouble you get into. I don't know whether to laugh or to be angry. I'm sorry, Giovanni. And sorry for the trouble, you too, but this is no place for a chat. Let's find a spot where we can treat you some snacks and we'll talk. Hang on, I, I don't know if I have the fishes here. Okay, but let's get the one jumping. Oh, there are two jumping. I don't have enough of those to, to always succeed, even with quite a lot. And the other? No, no, no. Damage. Okay, I didn't scare it. Damn. Those close. No, I don't want you. Log. 
Uh, it's a treasure holder, I shouldn't be leaving records, but since we put it through all kinds of different channels for this treasure hunt, we hereby leave this record to prevent an unfair division of spoils. Our destination is at our Percor, where it is said that the treasure, the secret treasure of the Lilia Cruces or the Lies. And where the legendary Fede Castle is said to be located, but more importantly, according to the intel we collected, it is also the final refuge of the legendary Benit Giuliano. I got things from Giuliano around town already. That's really baffling. Could this could a tiny island like that somehow be some kind of bottomless treasure swallowing pit? Still, no matter what, this time I'm sure we'll find something. The voyage has been going smoothly. To make things easier, I decide to head into town disguised as an adventurer. I hope the rest of the crew can keep their tempers in check. The next few pages are illegible, having been repeatedly scribbled over. In the next legible section, the handwriting seems to be completely different from before. Oh, we made off like minutes this time. Though there were a few wrinkles, we nicked many of the Dark Lord's treasures. Next, we returned to our village in the north to recruit soldiers and purchase horse. Oh, they got possessed. Uh, we'll show those lunatics following Erinys just who has the right to follow to roll the fountain to come. How many days have passed? Three? No lanes to be seen? Nothing but sea fog as far as I can see. Has it been 10 days or 9? I can no longer tell. We toss out most of our supplies to make room for more treasure. And our food is running short. Damnation. None of this treasure this treasure at all. It's nothing but rocks. Rocks. Ah. 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 They went this guy's adventure. Ah. So those guys we beat up at the beginning of the story quest were bandits really. But these guys. What have we done? How did it come to this? The dire ends abruptly. Damn. So they. They died at sea? We just took a wave boat back and forth. How did they die at sea when we can see land all around? Man, they died. Skyward! Do we need provisions in our wave rider? There's a guy here who makes instruments. A town is a small place, and our desserts and tea are all quite ordinary, so they might not look like much to you who have traveled and seen much. Giovanni, why do you have to talk like this? My heart's made of flesh and blood, just as yours is, uh, it too can be hurt. Is that so? And here I thought that the heart of one who cares so little about their family would be made of immovable stone. I... Well, Paimon didn't think it turned out like this. This is so awkward. Stop arguing. You're going to spoil the taste of the snacks. If I know, I had got that agent. Anyway, you brothers have been reunited after many years, so shouldn't you be happier about that? Hmm. Hey, just come on, help talk some things with them, would you? I envy you, at least you've been reunited. There's no point butting into someone else's family matters. No, the travel would envy them. Actually, Innes is still searching for his missing sister. You briefly explain the reason for our journey to the two brothers. I see, it must be hard to have to score the world for your family. And you're so young, too. I'm sure your sister has her reasons. I don't think she's forgotten you or has intentionally broken off contact. Please don't hate her for it. Uh, thanks. Actually, never mind my problem, you two. Thanks. Uh, to have been guided by a youth like you, we have truly shamed ourselves as elders. We may have had our disagreements, but we still we are still brothers. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, but don't be so quick to thank me. 
It was you who voluntarily gave up the family business. Now I am the legal heir to the Pasquale name, no matter how you... It's alright, Giovanni. I know what you mean, but of all the things I've lost, I regained the most precious of them. As for the rest, I don't need them. Again, don't speak so soon. The novice debt collector wasn't talking out, out of his head when he said that, his, that people lie. In that case, let us sign a contract. Write a statement in blank or white, in black or in white, or perhaps if some other means suit you better. We don't have to go that far. Uh, it seems you're quite the same as you used to be, but I've changed. I'm not the man I was before. Let me work in your workshop. I shall be your assistant, just as you were mine when we were little. You're the best then. I'm not going easy on you just because you're my big brother. Of course, no worries. Well, so guess the two of you have made up now. Yes, thanks so much for your help. Why, well, I somehow feel as if the triple price fare was hardly enough. It's just a shame I only have this much on me. If you can't sit yourself down and work hard in the workshop, repaying their kindness would be a simple matter. Hear that? Giovanni's gonna take good care of me. If we should have the chance to meet again, I'll treat you too. What about the rest of the story with your daughter? Your brother, when you meet Martha and Mo, Mo's back at the workshop, just let me do the talking. Alright, sure, but who are they? Martha is my wife and Mo's my son. You remember meeting the Valier's daughter? She would often come into the workshop and... Never mind, I'll tell the story later. Hmm. What is up here? Uh, okay, I guess I can mark that. No, delete. Uh, let me see. Oh no, I think this is a bad place to teleport you. Uh, I think he's inside down there. Hmm. No, I should have actually yeah. teleported there. Skyward! Got her! Sure. Ah, it's Garcia. Uh, so this is where he comes after the daily commissions in Somero. So perhaps we should go to Petkor village first. I was just there. Oh, so, uh, Mercy, Xavier, and Felix are not there. I don't know how to say that, Messrs. Ah, uh, is that short for Monsieur? No, that's too large. Too. Is that Monsieur's? Messrs? I'm gonna read that as Messrs. I've never seen that. McCountry and Babis should still be in the village. Mayhap they can give you some suggestion or inspire you. Even in the worst case scenario, you have two receptacles to pour your troubles into. No, my dear Luton, no. The country and Babis's research is now basling bright, basling, basling bright, basling as blazing a trail like the wildfire through the dry tinder. In their last letter to me, they indicated that an intelligent man from the Fountain Research Institute had arrived in Petricor. I don't think I met anyone. This Mr. Bosuet fellow, I think I met this guy, is quite knowledgeable and perceptive and helped them resolve a number of issues. 
And as for me, Percy, you return to Fontaine. Truly an unexpected meeting. We never imagined we'd see you in Fontaine. Though your timing is as impeccable as always. Indeed, truly impeccable time. But still, we are happy to see you, Agnes. Whoa, they look exhausted. Such dry circles around their eyes. It's like they don't have any energy left at all. What's wrong, Garcia? Our, um, his research encountered some unprecedented problems. But it's a very long story. Now we're planning to go to the Opera Epicles to help them close their books. With our work's done, we can all find a quiet place to sit down and have a chat. You still have other work to do? It can really be called work, just being hired here and there to assist with various calculations. The Opera Epicles recently hosted a whole host of troops and urgently need to sell their accounts. So it were enough to cover the costs of returning to Petricor, we I, in place of Mr. Garcia, will accept the commission. Um, what's Garcia doing for money? It's like using a cannon to eradicate an anthill. Calculations like those are so simple a child could do them. I could do it all in an afternoon even without using a numbering machine. So why will he do that and not you? So this is an excellent way to raise funds. Let's set off right away, sir. By the way, you know, could I trouble you to accompany us? Can we do math? Uh, with your reputation preceding us on the road, perhaps you'll manage to avoid running into any unnecessary trouble. Rest assured, we'll pay you appropriate remuneration for the trouble. Alright then, you shouldn't run into any trouble in the city. For you, I wouldn't make any hasty assumptions. At any rate, we should get going. Do I have to walk there or can I just teleport? It must be said, this opera house is magnificent. It brings quite a pretty sum. The opera house... Uh, let's set off and get to work. Once we're done, we'll return to Petrocor Village. When we're back, I'll open up a bakery there and never touch another numbering machine again. Uh, sir, what's wrong, Luton? You look like you've seen a ghost. Uh. It really is a ghost. And it kinda sucks that this was part of daily commissions and not an actual world quest. Up to now. Garcia? Miss Kaya, what's she doing here? Isn't this quite a coincidence? Sir, so what you just said wasn't particularly polite. No? Oh, shut it, Luton. Oh, that'll be the, the nail. You see, it's such a pleasure to bump into you. And you too, Venus. Let me guess, you've come to help the Opera House settle their accounts. Could it be that the accounts he is planning to settle is. Of course not. A troop has never performed here. From what I know of Garcia, though, he's not the type to watch opera in his spare time. So the only reason he come to the opera house would be because he was hired to work here, no? From the bottom of my heart, I feel you are more suitable to accompany this gentleman than I am, Miss Kaya. Uh, every one of us is irreplaceable. My dear Lutong, I, uh, I'm very happy to see you, Kaya. I. You don't look at all happy, I must say. I presume your research hit a snag. 
How do you figure that out? Well, he certainly wouldn't be unhappy to see me, or because of you, Arlotong. The only thing that could make him this unhappy is that numbering machine. How do you know Garcia so well, Miss Kaya? You haven't seen each other for so long. Yeah, how long has it actually been? Perhaps it's her intuition, perhaps Garcia is not the toughest that you crack. Perhaps we should find a cafe where we can sit down and have a nice leisurely chat. This isn't really something that can be explained in just a few words. I still need to... Uh, I mean, I'm very happy, but we... Relax, sir. Those calculations are quite simple. I can handle them all myself. After all, you can just make Miss Kaya stay there and wait for us to finish, can you? Thank you, Latone. You're very considerate. We'll bring you back a cup of coffee. Thank you, miss. Enjoy your drink with Mr. Garcia. Kai and Garcia live together. So, they're up for coffee, just like that. This whole thing had nothing to do with us from the start. Nothing to do with us at all. So, what are we even doing here? Not so, Venus. What comes next is your actual commission. Do I have to fetch cooking ingredients? Do I have to fetch parts? Why don't I go to... <laughs> take some pictures for them. Very amusing, but I don't plan to waste your time. Garcia and I, we're actually in danger right now. Huh? Let's discuss over there. No. Yeah. Skyward. Hmm. We should be fine here. Let me start from the beginning. This helped us with the numbering machine in Sumeru. Its performance has come on leaps and bounds. Naturally, Mr. Garcia was very excited and wanted to continue improving it. But as I said, the transmission structure of traditional mechanisms is actually quite limited. We were no longer making any new performance breakthroughs with this numbering machine, so we decided to return to Fontaine to search for new inspiration and research ideas. But after we returned, Mr. Garcia was approached by a strange fellow. He claimed he could provide research funds and even help, and even help Mr. Garcia find other research partners. But there was a catch, he wanted Mr. Garcia to share all his design data with him. There's no way Garcia would accept that, sounds like he was up to no good. Yeah, asking someone to hand over the research finding right from the get-go, surely that will, that's just plain, uh, surely that's just, that's plain and simple. Exactly, so Mr. Garcia emphatically refused the offer. But afterwards, it seemed as though there was someone following us. Someone even broke into our room while we were out and searched for our belongings. They took good care to put everything back in place as it was, but Mr. Garcia discovered traces of their actions. It's scary, so because you wouldn't give it to him, now he just wants to take it. After we discovered our room had been searched like that, we decided to raise enough money to get out of here and return to Petricor as soon as possible. But why return to Petricor? I never seen you guys there. And I don't really remember if you guys mentioned going there before. Once you arrive, our plan is to contact the other steam gentlemen of the Daydream Club and find a way to solve this problem together. And Petricor is, uh, let's just say it's Mr. Garcia's home turf. For him, there's no safer place to be. Today is the day that we plan to set off for Petricor, so we hoped you would come along as protection. We never thought we'd run to Miss Kaya here. For our safety's sake, all I could do was have Mr. Garcia take her back to the city. What can I do? How can I help? It appear why most of my choices are the same when it comes to <laughs> story dialogues. It appears we must delay our departure. Please go find Mr. Garcia and quickly, just like I said before, with your reputation preceding us on the road, perhaps you manage to avoid running into any unnecessary trouble. I went over there right away. They are not in any real danger, are they? No, 
I shouldn't think so. Mr. Garcia is still within the court of Montaigne, and there are numerous Gardamax on patrol. If they intend to use violent means, then we can trust the Maison Gardenage to take care of the greater part of the problem. Mr. Garcia will appraise Miss Kaya for of the situation. As for what comes next, that will be for Miss Kaya to decide. In a way, we should head back to the city as soon as possible. Okay, so coming here was... We should get back, so he's not doing their job, he's just going back to the city with us. Then there was really no point in going there, because we didn't know we would run to her. As expected, they are keeping a close eye on Mr. Garcia. Uh, See so the man with the hat in front of him. With the hat? No, that they are using hats. Beside the table, next to the counter. What? I'm certain that he's the one who's been following us these past few days. I'll go call the guards. Seriously, just call the guards. That's not like the wisest course of action, and there just so happened to be a guard nearby. We reported this case to the guard mate before. So she already knows what's been going on. I'm sure she'll be willing to help us. With a member of the guards present, I doubt they'll try anything too extreme. Minus, please have a word with the guard mate. I'll go speak with Mr. Garcia. Let's get going then. At your service, dreams. What do you plan to do next? It appears we must ascertain the identity of those people. Also, we already reported the case to the guards. There's little they can do without any leads to follow up. Plus, the Corps Fontaine is far too large for the guards to protect us everywhere we go. And now that we've gotten Kaya involved, it's become even more complicated. I hope Mr. Garcia can convince Miss Kaya to leave Fontaine. The way we can proceed with our original plan. Uh, what's up? Why do you look so upset? I'm just... it's nothing. Perhaps this cough is a bit too strong. A tongue. Anyway, isn't Garcia's research at a dead end? It's only a dead end in so far as there's no way to further increase performance. In terms of practical application, this number machine still has many great things to accomplish. It's just Mr. Garcia has never really concerned himself with such practicalities. I suspect this may be one of the reasons he suffers so much. But it could be also be it could be also could also be why he plays the part of the frustrated researcher so perfectly. Shouldn't there be a guy with a hat here? What is it? Has something happened? He said a guy with a hat. Uh, which guard? Yeah, skyward, scatter. Hello, how may I help you? Well, long story short, you the officer maintain all that has happened. Ah, so it's about Mr. Garcia. I understand. Let's head over together. At the very least, let's scare off the suspicious fellow first. How strong is a melusine if they have to restrain a tug or something? Thank you, Gardamente. The scoundrel left as soon as he caught sight of you. I was merely doing my job. Sir, it appears you must vacate this city quickly and return to Petrocor without due haste. I believe they've gradually, they are gradually losing their patience and may resort to drastic measures. I shall escalate this matter to my superiors. You should have 
a response within a few days. Ideally, we'll be able to assign a few officers to escort you. Unfortunately, however, our sources are limited and we have affairs to take care of within the city. So, we will only be able to escort you part of the route, and not all the way to Petrocor. Also, you should find somewhere safe to stay before you leave. Discussing the, this matter may take some time. Please escort each of me, I can protect them. Thank you, with you by our side. They won't dare do anything too rash. Uh, but doesn't Kai work with the troop? If you guys go to Petrocor, then what about her? I shall go with them. What? Miss, I mean this sincerely from the bottom of my heart. Please don't. My dear Luton, don't even bother. I'm just, I'm just like your boss, you know? I simply can't be persuaded. Uh, but we have no idea what kind of dangers we may encounter. All the more reason for me to come with you, or are you intending to abandon me again like last time? Left holding nothing but a composition with neither beginning or nor end. Moreover, our troop director is quite curious about your machine generated music. I'm sure he'd be in favor of my coming along. Very well then, I've said my piece. Shall, where shall we go next? And just like in Sumeru, Kai completely steamrolled st Garcia. Garcia doesn't stand a chance against her. Perhaps it's because Mr. Garcia doesn't even want to win. Luton, uh, let's let us hurry. We must find a suitable place to stay. Preferably somewhere with lots of people. Somewhere with lots of people. Perhaps you could try. The hotel where our troops stay is quite busy and we all know each other. If any stranger tries to sneak into our midst, they'll be discovered immediately. Also, our troop director will certainly want to learn more about your numbering machine. Oh. Then settled. Excellent. All of our problems have been solved. All of our problems? That's that then, Inus, please take this, consider it an advanced deposit for your services. I don't know when we'll be able to set off, but when the time comes, I'm counting on you. But why do I feel like we have even more problems than before? Ah, okay, now we have to get to the next part. Uh, let me look at the map. Mm, okay, complete. Uh, so uh, it's not at the hotel. The next part. Because the hotel actually will be. Yeah. I oh, know. She said the hotel, but she didn't say. The name, maybe it isn't this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the people are saying we have to wait a whole real day. Where? Ah, oh, right here. Oh no, it's you already. Hello, nice to see you. I hate to tell this, and it's a real pity, but our trip to Petrocor will be will have to be postponed. Has something happened in Petrocor? I run low of travel funds, something happened. Sure, da some dangers, difficulties, and unforeseen situations, something like that. According to the guards, all the residents of Petrocor seem to have fallen into a strange slumber. But I fixed that already. The guards suspect that it has something to do with some kind of Natural hypnotic gas that's escaping from the ground beneath the city. For safety reasons, they are currently advising all travelers to stay away, us included, of course. Mr. Garcia is very worried about his friend who are still in town, and he's even considering slipping a notice on his own. Fortunately, Miss Kai was very quick on her feet and managed to summon Mr. Garcia from trying by tying him up amicably. Tying him up amicably. We provided him with a mattress to lie down on, 
and the restraints are made of fine setting. I'm sure that no harm will afflict him except for his own guilty conscience. In any case, all we can do now is to is wait here in the Court of Fontaine. Thanks to the guards and the theater troop members, those who would seek to lay their hands on Mr. Garcia research won't dare do anything rash. I'll let you know as soon as we're able to depart. Oh, let me just try. Why not? Yeah, but this should just go along if the other quest is done. Mm. Yeah, probably didn't should be wait that long. But let's see. Let's see you. Mm. Running low on our funds. It's certainly not wrong, but our journey has been forestalled by a far greater problem. Most of the guards have fallen into strange slumber. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, next time there is a short quest or some story. I'll try to remember to do that one along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wasn't even an hour of gameplay, but I don't think there are more quests for me to do now. Let me mark this one and remove that one. Uh, Alright, so I'm off.